family in the name of Yeshua, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. <clears throat> and so hopefully you've had a, or had, or having, sorry, let's say it like that, um, a, a happy um, feast of unleavened bread if you're celebrating um, or a Passover resurrection hallelujah and so we are in the eighth week we've been teaching for eight weeks now the ancient Ethiopic perspective of great Lent and so for those that are for those of of of, of that mm, how could I say of that perspective of that culture um, you know this week would be a holy week for Eastern Orthodox Christians, amen? And because of, because of what we've experienced in our life um, as far as the Rastafarian community and being drawn to the Ethiopic uh, roots of, of our culture and things like this, we've you know we've done these teachings and we've been doing these teachings and we we've learned a lot from that aspect or that perspective of 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 our culture uh as you know or as you come on the channel you know we do teach also from a jewish perspective sephardic jew uh we would that mean more of a, of a spanish um jewish nature coming from spain and 1492, the expulsion of the Jews from there. Um, and then when we do the background check and things like this, and even from our African roots, you know, we also have African uh, roots. And so we know on those slave ships, um, Jewish heritage came as well. So from all corners, I like to say, even the Taino Indian, uh, you can see there's some some aspects, but I'm, I don't want to get off. I don't want to say it's off topic because all of these all of these are great for for conversation and things. But most importantly, you know this this past week, you know, began the feast of unleavened bread. It uh, signified the death, burial, and the resurrection of Yeshua Jesus Christ from a ancient Ethiopic perspective <clears throat> like I said before through these videos if, if you if you haven't gone through the teachings uh, what they focused on each week I would go back I would subscribe I would you know get notified and, and, and do those things so uh, for, for this week it's it's holy week for Eastern Orthodox Christians and so what what I like to say, or even what the Bible says, what Paul says, is that Christ is celebrated. And so that's the point, is what I'm making, is that Christ is celebrated. People get hung up, if, whether, oh, if it's an Ethiopic, um, if it's a, a Korean thing, if it's a, you know, people celebrate Christ. Now, again, I, you know, Sometimes we be mixing some things that shouldn't be there. And that's those are the things that we have to let the Lord <clears throat> come into our heart and convict us of. Um, but tradition is good if it brings life. If it brings life. And so this week, Semun um, Haimenot, or um, we can say the Passion Week, the week of suffering. Uh, Sorry, Yeshua it's Semun an Ethiopic perspective or an Eastern Orthodox Christian perspective and many people in the world will be celebrating that this week so what I like to say is that we keep the party going hey we keep the celebration of Yeshua going and that should be every day that should be every part of your life uh, remember that we'll have some more videos coming out this week and we'll go back to Torah Nuggets because of Passover, because of the Feast of Unleavened Bread, uh, last week the Torah portion was suspended and we just focus on, focus on that. But anyways, let's get back to this part and Semun uh, Haimenot, 
is Passion Week, and the altar is covered with black cloth, remembering the dark centuries during which Adam was alienated from his creator. And, and that's, that's really what, that's really the promise. And I think we spoke about this on some other, on some other videos <clears throat> and talked about Gedla Adam and talked about the conflict. Gedla Adam is a book that's in the Ethiopic church. And it speaks about the conflict between Adam and Satan and the five and a half days, the 5,500 years that God made a promise to Adam and says, I will, I will redeem your seed. And the ancient Ethiopic church sticks to that. And so it speaks about the centuries which Adam was alienated from his creator, the priest wear black vestments as the week is a time of commemorating the suffering and damnation of 5,500 years. Lent is called Great Abi, Abi Som in Amharic, which is, uh, we can, or we can say Amarinya, which is the language spoken in, in, in Ethiopia. Lent is a is great because firstly it is Geta's fast or the Lord's fast. Secondly, though this is um, this we fast from temptations, uh, the love of money, greed, and arrogance are overcome. So I was also talking about and then this is a lot of videos. We've started a series of covenant eyes and speaking about pornography and pornography in, in the church, in the ecclesia, in the so-called body of Christ, and how it destroys your faith. It destroys you in the physical sense and it, and it, and it, and it, and it erodes away at your spirit, man. And fasting is not only from something you're consuming, but what you're consuming in your eyes, in your ears, in your head, in your heart, and, and, and the importance of fasting, amen? As this week is a time of commemorating the suffering and damnation of 5,550 years, I'm uh, sorry, 5,500 years, the fig tree is representative of Israel and it is not bearing fruit and Yeshua condemns it. Are we bearing fruit? Are we bearing fruit? Now, yesterday in the Ethiopic week, Obviously, the first day of the week is Sunday. That's, if you didn't know that, please look at your calendar. <laughs> and it always starts with Sunday. And it always ends with Saturday. <laughs> Amen. So, uh, Sunday on the Ethiopic celebration, um, it, what we would know as Palm Sunday, right? And then, and then it'll continue, right? So, you know, you have Hoshiana. Right. And then and then today we have Monday, which is um, in in Amharic is Senyo. And so it would be Mak Senyo. I'm sorry, Mak Senyo is Tuesday. Kedus Senyo. So holy, Kedus, Kadosh, Kedus, Kadosh. Remember that we talked about Amharic being a Semitic language and it's it's the same group as Hebrew. Amen. Same with with, with uh, Arabic. So there's, there's, I'm just going to deal with today, although we can go through them really quick. Monday, Kiddush Senyo. Then we have Mach Senyo, which is Tuesday. Kiddush Rabu, or Rabu, which is Wednesday. Kiddush Hamus, which is Thursday. Um, uh, Sikilet, which is Holy Friday. And Kidami Sur, which is Holy Saturday. And then at Saturday, again, it commemorating the same thing, it the Lord's resurrection, and we have Fasica or Tinsaye, and that's resurrection. So we just continue to, to celebrate the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, what we know as Passover, amen. And so there's different readings for each day, and since today is Monday, and I'll keep these very short, so Kedus uh, Senyo, and let's look at Mark. If you have your Bible, Say, open up 
your Bible. Hallelujah. 11. 11, 11. So we have obviously the triumphant entry. Um, and then later on in verse 12, it's the cursing of the fig tree. And on the morrow, when they had come to Bethania or Bethany, he was hungry. You know, the Lord is hungry. He's hungry for fruit. He's hungry to see some fruit. The Bible says when he comes back to the earth, will he find faith? That's what he's, he's looking for. Faith in him. Faith in the one true God. Faith in what he's done. Faith. Trust. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say it like that. Trust. It's trust that he's looking for. Trust in him. Trust. It, if you don't believe me, believe the works. Because the works that I do are, are, are in God. God sent me and seeing the fig tree afar off having leaves appearing as it has fruit. Are we appearing to be having fruit, but really not bearing the fruit of the spirit? He came if happily he might find anything thereon. Oh, I, I see a, I see a leaf. I see a leaf. Let me see. Let me check it out. And when he had come to it, he found nothing but leaves. For the time was not yet. Now, so he said, well, it wasn't time yet. There's, there's, a, there's a study with that. And there are certain fig trees that, that during that time do give off fruit so perhaps it was one of those trees but even then what does the bible tell us always be ready always be ready because we don't know the time hallelujah hallelujah where are we and when jesus answered and said unto it no man eat fruit of the hereafter forever and this and his disciples heard it and they came to jerusalem and Jesus went into the temple and began to cast out them that sold and bought in the temple and over and over through the tables and the money changers and the seats of them who sold doves. Very interesting. My brother uh, Naftali did a live yesterday for some of those that be watching who come from that from my brother's channel. And what did he tell? What are what are some of the tables in your life that God will overthrow? And judgment happens in the house of God first. And so are we bearing fruit or are we just playing? Or are we robbing God? Or are we, man, there's a lot that you can get into. <clears throat> and the seats of them that sold doves and would not suffer for any man should carry a vessel through the temple. And he taught saying unto them, is, not, is it not written, my house shall be called of all nations a house of prayer but ye have made it a den of thieves and that's largely what it's happened to the body of christ to western christianity i mean to in general many places is money useful absolutely absolutely we're in business so you see we're recording from the gym we're in business but we, it's the love of money. Now God can use a man. God can use a woman who's fully consecrated to him and can trust him with, the, with, with riches of this time, of this age, to be able to do the work of God. But if you're just robbing God, if you're just peddling the word of God, if you're just misusing the word of God, cursed cursed and the scribes and the chiefs heard it and the chief priests heard it and sought how they might destroy him they feared him they feared him because all the people were astonished at his teaching at his doctrine and even and when even had come he went out of the city 
so we'll we'll slow up there because then it'll go into Maxenio. It'll go into Tuesday. And so we'll do each day like that. And so I just wanted to take this little moment as we continue the celebration, as we continue talking about Yeshua, he's risen. He's, you know, we'll do some other teachings because we can, we, you know, we can do the, the road of Emmaus and we can, I mean, there's just a lot. There's just a lot as, as we continue the, the, the chronicles of Messiah to the ascension. All right, we're pushing towards that. And remember, we started counting the Omar, which we talked about in the, the great debate video. You can go back to that. And so we're counting each day. I believe today we've gone into the fourth <coughs> day of counting the Omar. So we're pushing towards Pentecost with Shavuot, the festival of weeks. And, and during, the, during the, the, the 50 days, Yeshua, Jesus, was around for 40 days. And he taught and showed himself and all of those things. And so we're going to get into all of those because it's important. The ascension is super important. But I just want to take this time here and speak about this moment of are we giving off fruit or do we appear like we're giving off fruit? What are some things that God needs to clean out of your temple? Don't you know that you are the temple of the Holy Spirit, which houses the Holy Spirit? Be ye holy as I am holy. Be complete, be made whole as I am perfect. That's what perfect is. Nobody's perfect. Okay, God is. And God, he, without him, we're incomplete. So we need him. We need him. And Yeshua, Jesus, is the full expression of God. The brightness and the glory of God. He's spoken to us. He spoke In times past, he spoke in sun-dried times. He's spoken uh, through the prophets, through many signs, through many wonders. In these times, says the book of, Hebrews, of Hebrews, in these times, he's spoken through his son. We have a shining example. We have a shining example. Man is without excuse. We have a shining example. And it's through the life, the death, burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ and the ascension of Yeshua, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christos, and cualquier lenguaje que lo puedes, in whatever language you can put him in. He is who he is. And so I want to encourage you today to, to let the Lord come in and curse whatever it doesn't need to be there. What's not giving fruit? What's not bearing fruit? Father, take it out. Search me today. Search me today. And take out what does not need to be there and put in what needs to be there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We love you, family. In the mighty, matchless name of Yeshua.